Here's an example of a bit of a strange case that leads to a nice shortcut. So we're looking at a dependent variable w that depends on a function f with an independent variable x, but x depends on two variables, r and s. And this is kind of an interesting case. If we try to make our diagram, we have our independent variables, our intermediate variable, and our dependent variable. So when we go to make our diagram, we have two independent variables that lead to one intermediate variable and one dependent variable. But in the last example, with two independent variables, we saw that we could either ask a question about W changing with respect to R or W changing with respect to S. And that's because we can only do one independent variable at a time. They're not related to each other, so we can't find a way to combine them. Um, but what's kind of neat is that each one of these partial derivatives, w with respect to r or w with respect to s, it's a single term formula for the chain rule. And this is why I would like for you to practice making these diagrams. It'll help you come up with the chain rule formula in each case, depending on the independent variable situation, the intermediate variable situation. Uh, rest assured, you'll always have exactly one dependent variable, so you shouldn't have to worry about a case of multiple dependent variables. Um, but you could have any combination of independent and intermediate variables. Um, and they are going to change the way your chain rule works each time. Um, the cool shortcut that I mentioned at the beginning of the video is a way for us to calculate derivatives for calc1 functions. And we're specifically talking about implicit functions. Now, if y is an implicit function of x, and we have it written the way we have here, x squared plus 3y squared equals negative 4y plus 4, this function, for example, has many, many different versions of y as a function of x that make this true. So rather than trying to solve this and find a y equals f of x function, we can use implicit differentiation from calc 1. Let me remind you what that looks like. That's where you take the derivative of both sides of your equation. So taking the derivative with respect to x of x squared gives us 2x. With respect to x of 3y squared, well, that actually requires us to do a chain rule here. That would look like first the derivative with respect to y of 3y squared, and then we multiply by dy dx. On the right-hand side of our equation, we would also need to do the chain rule, take the derivative with respect to y of negative 4y, then multiply that by dy dx, and then the derivative of 4 with respect to x is 0. So then we work on our little chain rule derivatives. 3y squared with respect to y, that becomes 6y, and that's multiplied by dy dx because of the chain rule. The derivative of negative 4y with respect to y is negative 4, again multiplied by dy dx. So we have 2x plus 6y dy dx is equal to negative 4 dy dx. To finish this off, we want to be able to write dy dx equals whatever we've got. So we want to move the negative 4 dy dx over to the right hand side. so that we can combine like terms, and we're going to move the, minus, the 2x by subtracting 2x from both sides. So we'll have 6y dy dx plus 4y 
sorry, not 4y, just 4, dy dx equals negative 2x. We'll factor out the dy dx, leaving behind 6y plus 4 equals negative 2x. Divide both sides by 6y plus 4 to get our final answer, dy dx equals negative 2x divided by 6y plus 4. Okay, that was our Calc 1 implicit differentiation process, but now that we know how to do a chain rule for multivariable functions, we can find a shortcut here. So if we have y, a function of x defined implicitly, what we can do is create a new function, capital F, that has x and y in it, setting that equal to zero. So this capital F of x, y equals zero, this is our implicit equation. And if we have that, we can draw a branch diagram for our partial derivatives. So w, that's the variable that comes out of f, the capital F. Um, f takes in x and y, but we know that y is a function of x. So let's watch this x goes to y through little f of x, x goes to x just because that's always true, x and y together go into capital F to make w. This looks a lot like what we're doing in Calc 3, so we're going to continue what we were doing using the chain rule. If our goal is to find out what dy dx is, instead what we're going to do is take the derivative of this equation f of xy equals 0, and we're going to take the derivative with respect to x since we're looking for dy dx. So we'll take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. If we take the derivative of capital F with respect to x, knowing that f is a multivariable function, we're going to need to do partial derivatives and the chain rule. So going down our branch, we can see that f comes from w, which goes to x, and then to x again. So we will need the partial of w with respect to x, and we will also need dx dx. Now dx dx, that's equal to 1. How does x change with respect to itself? It's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So down that left branch, we will have partial w with respect to x times 1. Going down the right side branch, we will have w going to y and then y going to x. So we'll have the partial of w with respect to y. Then we're also going to have dy dx. Since we know that y is a function of x, we can write that. So down the right branch, we have partial w with respect to y times dy dx. When we add those two terms together, it's equal to the derivative of 0 on the right-hand side of our equation. And that's just 0 again. Um, dw dx that's the partial derivative of w, otherwise known as our capital F function with respect to x. dw dy, that's the partial derivative of our capital F function with respect to y. I'm just going to change notations here so it's a little easier to read. So we have the partial with respect to x times 1 plus the partial with respect to y times dy dx. That's the thing we're looking for. When we add those together, it's equal to 0, which means we can solve for dy dx just by subtracting the x partial from both sides and then dividing by the y partial. So finally, we get the partial derivative of y, not partial, just kidding. The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to a negative times the partial with respect to x divided by the partial with respect to y. Now the trick here is 
taking the calc1 function and turning it into a calc3 multivariable function. Let's do an example here that shows you what I mean. The function that we did the implicit differentiation with is written here at the top of the screen, x squared plus 3y squared equals negative 4y plus 4. The first thing I need to do is create that f of x, y equals 0 function. All that means is move all of the terms to one side or the other of the equal sign. So I'm going to define f of x, y to be the x squared plus 3y squared plus 4y minus 4 equals 0. This shortcut says that I can quickly find dy dx without implicit differentiation just by finding the partial of f with respect to x as well as the partial of f with respect to y and plugging them in. So let's do that. Partial with respect to x, that looks like 2x. Partial with respect to y, that looks like 6y plus 4. Plug those into our formula, we get dy dx equals negative 2x divided by 6y plus 4. And compare that with your notes, those should match. So this is our implicit differentiation shortcut that we uh, can use now that we know how to use the chain rule with multivariable functions.